Fiat Chrysler abruptly withdrew its proposal to merge with French automaker Renault. The company says that it has become clear that the political conditions in France do not currently exist for the combination to proceed successfully. We want to turn to the panel on this. It's a little more than just politics, Pross. I mean, you know the numbers and the linkages between different automakers here. When they mention politics, that means layoffs. They can't do layoffs there, right? right. So, um, you know, before he died, Sergio Marchioni at FCA was pushing for a merger yeah. for years. I mm -hmm. mean, GM was one of the partners that he was you know, trying to make that happen. You know, and, it, and it makes sense because as you go towards autonomous and electric cars, the R&D spend is just massive, right? So last year, FCA spent only three billion bucks last year just in R&D. Toyota spent 10 million, and that's just one automaker. So they know that for the numbers, for scale, they got to team up with somebody like a Renault, for instance, or even maybe another European automaker, because they need to actually kind of compete on this next level, which is the future of mobility. And right now, they're making Dodge Durangos and Dodge Journeys that no one wants. I mean, people buy, but they're just very kind of Jeep's old Jeep's popular. Yeah, and, they are. And, and just to break down what exactly is going on here, or at least the, what the French are saying is the roadblock, they say it's Nissan. And right. to remind you, it's a little complicated here. Renault owns about 43% of Nissan. Nissan only owns 15% of Renault. Non-voting shares. Right. And plans to abstain, I guess, from this vote. But if it's non-voting shares, I don't know how that works. And then the French government has two board seats as well at Renault. So it's complicated. <laughs> yeah, the Nissan element is, to me, the most fascinating part of it. And what's interesting, what you're hearing from Renault uh, about what Nissan um, is concerned about. Number one, Nissan obviously is concerned that they were not consulted about this when they have an alliance that has been there for years. Uh, the other element that I think is interesting is, is Nissan's concern has always been uh, the French government's 15 percent stake in Renault, because they believe they're bringing more to the table, more in revenue and they simply don't have the voting shares in the Renault-Nissan alliance, this merger would have diluted the French government element of it. Um, it would have diluted Nissan's as well, but the French government would not have had as much of a say, which Nissan has said all along is the big concern. But the speed with which um, Fiat Chrysler withdrew from this potential deal, does that raise the possibility that they are talking with another auto manufacturer. Because as you pointed out, Pros, Sergio Macchioni was trying to do this with GM. There are plenty of other partners out there that they might be talking to or not. I mean, that does raise your eyebrows. Like, that happened so, I mean, we just learned last week about the deal, and now all of a sudden it's pulled back. So, yeah, could there be another kind of suitor there or another deal in the works? I mean, I mentioned what Akiko was talking about. Nissan has never been happy with that Renault alliance. So maybe that's something there, too, that that is kind of mucking up that deal mm. uh, in that regard, too. So. All right, well, we'll keep watching it, especially with these two auto aficionados, geeks. auto geeks <laughs> on set.